the Me Too movement in China is not borrowed from the West. It's really a natural outcome of the homegrown feminist movement that's been going on for quite a few years. In a nation that was founded on communist ideals that famously stated, women hold up half the sky, you will think being a woman in China is great. But in fact, it's just like being a woman everywhere else. Culturally, China has a history of seeing women as potential wives and mothers, leading to many women being denied opportunities outside of those traditional roles. And it doesn't help that the modern Communist Party does not like any challenge to its power. Even an organized women's rights movement can be seen as a threat. To understand China's feminist movement, we are going to meet Letta Hong Fincher, a researcher of feminism in China. In the early communist era, the Communist Party put women to work in the countryside and in, in factories. And so you had probably the world's highest level of female labor force participation. And women were seen as really critical to building the, the economy, um, developing the industry of this new communist nation. And all the propaganda back then was, was very much seeing women in positions traditionally that only men could do. But since the onset of market reforms, that has all changed. There's been a huge resurgence of gender inequality, and the Communist Party has been very aggressively pushing propaganda that women should be really traditionally feminine and not concern themselves with advancing their careers or their educations. I write a lot about a turning point that happened in 2015 with the jailing of five young women who became known as the Feminist Five. These five young women were jailed just for wanting to celebrate International Women's Day. That's what ended up galvanizing so many young women because they were so shocked. They didn't understand why the government wanted to jail these women. And so that action by the government in jailing the women really backfired. I think most of the feminists, they are not like directly saying like, we want to overthrow the regime. But why is the state so, so paranoid, so concerned? They're very well organized. And so they have a lot of supporters in a lot of different cities across China. Anytime anybody is able to do that and organize effectively, they're considered to be a threat. In China, sometimes I feel like within one circle of friends, everyone is a feminist. But when I come back to sit with my, my relatives, they have never heard about yeah. this before. Well, uh, I think that's changing, and that's why I use the subtitle Awakening, because more and more women are waking up to this problem. There are a number of men who were accused of sexual misconduct within China's Me Too movement. They include some of them like prominent writers, and one of them a state media anchor. But what happened to the Chinese men? Some of the men have lost their jobs as a result of these accusations. A lot of them don't suffer any consequences whatsoever. But I have to say that's the same thing in, in America or any other country. I think in the future we're going to see probably more coercive policies coming from the Chinese government, really trying to force women into more subservient roles. But at the same time, more and more young women are going to push back against that pressure.